So let's um, uh, think about the hybridization of <clears throat> the atomic orbital uh, or the atomic di diagram, orbital diagram of nitrogen, just the isolated nitrogen, and then hybridizing to the molecular form of nitrogen where it actually can bond to those three hydrogens. Is everybody okay with what we're doing? Okay, so the isolated nitrogen, if you recall, so when we're doing this, right, you remember that the valence electrons are the only electrons that participate in bonding, okay? So those are the ones that we're going to emphasize, okay? So uh, the valence electrons in nitrogen are all the two electrons, right? So in this case, we have 2s and 2p. Okay, remember three orbitals in the 2p. We look up at the periodic table at nitrogen. How many valence electrons does it have? Five, five. right? Five. Yeah. So how do we put those in? Remember all our rules, off bow, Hans, Pauli exclusion. One, two, three, four, five. Okay? What do we know about ammonia? Right? So ammonia makes three, or nitrogen and ammonia makes three bonds, right? In this situation, you see three half-filled orbitals, right? Everybody sees that. So potentially nitrogen could make three bonds as it stands. But <clears throat> what we know is that these, <clears throat> the bonds of nitrogen are not um, 120 degrees apart, right? So what we need to do is figure out so what do we know about nitrogen right? uh, in ammonia? We know that the structure of ammonia looks something like that, right? Okay, remember the relative bond angle. So it's very similar to methane, which was, remember the bond angle of methane? 109.5, right? Do you yeah. remember the bond angle of ammonia? Anybody? 107.3, right? So very close to that 109.5. But you remember the electronic arra arrangement around that um, nitrogen atom, right? It was, what was the electronic arrangement? Tetrahedral, right? Yes. Okay, so tetra you remember tetrahedral too, okay. So tetrahedral gives you kind of that around 109.5 bond angle, okay? So, since all of those electron groups are equivalent, right, because of those bond angles being equivalent, we know that these, all these orbitals have to be equivalent, okay? So that's where we get the fact that it's got to rehybridize, okay, that and the bond angles, okay? So anyways, or hybridize. So we're going to mix these guys up, or hybridize, or whatever you want to call it, okay? And we've got 1s and 3p orbitals that we're mixing. So we're going to get, so we're putting in four orbitals. So how many are we getting now? Do you guys remember? Put in four, we get out four. four. They're all of equal energy. And what are they called? SP3, right? SP3. Okay. So when we do that, we fill it up using our Hund's rule and Pauli exclusion. <coughs> One. Two, three, four, five. Okay, so if you look here, this is our lone pair electrons. Is everybody okay with that being the lone pair? And notice bonding electron, bonding electron, bonding electron. Is everybody okay with that kind of analysis of it? Okay, again, we know this due to the, what Vesper theory tells us about the bond angles and the equivalency of those electron groups. Is everybody okay with thinking like that? Okay. Um, so if we were to look at one of these NH bonds, right, what would N, what orbital would N be using to make that bond? What is that orbital called? SP3, right? SP3. So it's got its one electron. And what is the H using for its orbital? One, one S. One S. SP3. Now, 
How many um, electrons does hydrogen have in it? One. So it can only use the one S orbital, right? So this is the one S orbital. That's the bonds that are the orbitals that are used to make that bond. Is everybody okay with that? I see some confusion. You okay with that? 1s for the hydrogen. It's the only orbital it's got, right? Any other questions? Or besides my questions? <laughs> okay, good.